everybody. Today we'll be creating an experience that uses the camera. So we have our journal. Instead of our journal, we can add photos from the library, right? Well, today we're going to add a new function where we will tap here in the top right hand corner and we will enable the camera experience where we will be able to take pictures, several pictures, and create a journal entry from that. Keep in mind, this is using AV Foundation. This is absolutely nothing new, but I just realized in preparation for a new feature that I want to add using some of the concept in WWDC 2024, I had never captured this, so that's why I'm doing the video. If you want something new, wait for the next session where I'm going to add a widget to the widget control screen to use this camera experience. So what we're going to do is before adding our uh, widget button, we're going to create the experience in the app, an experience that uses the camera to capture several photos. And then when the user is satisfied, they can create a journal entry. So basically we'll do the same as tapping on this icon here and creating this general entry, but it will already be pre-filled with some photos. So first let's create the button and enable our application to be able to take photos. So the first thing, given that we're taking photos, we need to ask permission to the user. So in our info playlist, we need to add a new entry, which is privacy. And we want camera usage description. Now let's add the button. This is our journal list view. We want this beside the title. And let's handle this through our journal list view model, how it's going to present. You'll see why later. It's presenting the camera. We're going to present our new view. Here, you will draw the camera, which is actually the view that the user will see, like what the camera is taking, where they can take pictures. We'll have a button so the user can take the pictures. We're going to do pretty much the same that we did in the in the journal entry view where we had just a scrollable view of the images that have been taken so far. We will not add methods to delete the pictures that the user has taken. It's basically every picture the user takes will get added to the journal. That's just an improvement that will not be part of this video.
and one more thing on up here we will tell the view model to start executing we'll see later why but basically we need to start capturing capturing the output that the camera is giving so the user can see all of that needs to happen on the on a view Okay, and what are we going to use to capture the images taken from the camera? And actually, how are we going to show the camera to the user? We're going to use AB Foundation for this. And the protagonist of this video will be a camera session, which is going to be an AB capture session. So in our init, So camera session. And we'll just be that. And in the on appear, we will configure the session. But this has two steps. We cannot start immediately showing to the user the camera. We need to first see if we have permission. That's the first thing you must always do with this is checking if we are authorized. So let's, so let's see if we can get the status. Because the user can already have authorize um, the camera. So we'll check the authorization status for video. If the status is authorized, we return. I'll see if the status is not determined. We'll ask for authorization. Otherwise, we'll just return false and well, for this video, we're not going to deal with the status, but you should display the reason for the user. Like if the status is not authorized, go to settings and enable it because otherwise without camera authorization, we cannot start this AV capture session. And this view is pretty much useless. Now, how do we request authorization? We do that with AV capture device, but request access for video. And that's pretty much it. This is an await and it returns a boolean. And we have to await here. Now this is how we check authorization. This is the first thing that we do. We need to do it on a task. Here we have authorization. Otherwise we just return. So if we do have authorization, that's when we start our session. Let's create another method for that. So since we are going to configure the session, the first thing we have to do is state that we're going to begin the configuration. We're going to do some stuff and here we're going to commit the configuration. So all of this, all of the configuration has to be set between these two lines. So first of all, we need a capture device, which is where we're going to have be taking photos and showing to the user the preview. We're going to ask that from the default device, you can get fancy here asking for a bunch of stuff from the device and the user, they can pick what type of uh, camera they're going to use. It's at the wide angle, the built-in dual camera. So we're going to just use default. Building dual camera, we want video, and the position will start always on the back. Again, we can make this a setting so the user can change it, but we're not gonna do that right now. So we can find this one, we'll use it. If not, let's check the other device. This is the build in wide angle camera and again for video also the back and some cloth otherwise we're in a device that does not have a camera so we'll error now that we have the capture device we need to add an input and an output to our session the input is going to be video just when you open the just like when you open the camera you see a video with the preview that's what you're going to use for the input 
and then after the user presses the button, it takes pictures, and that's the output. So first, the input. So we need an AV capture device input, and the device is the one that we just got here. And we need to check if our camera session can add this input. If it can't, then we return. There's nothing else we can do. We cannot continue configuring the session because without the input, well, yeah, our app is useless. And now let's do the same for the output. So we photo output. Gonna add our output and I almost forgot to add the input. And that's it. Now we commit the configuration. Now the input is okay, we just added to the session. The output we are going to need to keep a reference to it. Why? Because it's from this photo output that we take pictures. We capture a photo with the delegate. let's create a method to take a picture but we're not going to do anything with it yet let's go back to our capture view let's at least call this method but now we need to show the camera we have everything ready did i make the variable internal the camera session yes okay so now we need a view that displays this the preview just like we op when we open the camera i can do that right now on my device if i'm opening here you can see here this is the preview that we have to show and to do something similar so let's do that let's create another class which is going to be our camera And in make UI view, what type of view are we going to return? There is, let me import you again. So we do have a way to, AV Foundation does have a way to show this with AV Capture. This one, AV Capture Video Preview Layer, but that's in a in UI kit. So we will need a UI view representable. First, let's create our UI view. Now, how did I get this? From Apple's documentation, when you check AV Foundation and how to set up a session, they provide this code. I'm just reusing it. What they do not provide is how to add it to SwiftUI, which is what I'm doing here. And here we have to update the view. Now, how do we connect this to the session? We need actually that input. And maybe capture session. Once we have that session, in our UI view, which is again this camera preview view, we get this video preview layer. And this AV capture video preview layer has a session. So we pass this session, and that's how it's going to capture uh, the content and show it here. Actually, our camera preview representable it needs a session and where does it get it from our view mode oh 
see the mistake here this is it was not determined this is not determined and now that i'm thinking about this we committed the configuration we set the output what we never did was start the session and we let me see uh we're doing it this in a task i think we'll get an error here because i believe we cannot do this in the main thread the session well let's see what happens yep i'm getting an exception but we're not gonna well we're going yeah an exception here but let me at least show you the preview we do have um this running so we did get our preview we have what we wanted now let's improve this we can also make this button a little bit bigger the first thing we cannot oh here we got the warning it should be called from a background thread uh keep in mind we cannot just do task and start this why because every task just inherits what the color is doing so it's pretty much the main actor what we need here is attached okay let's move on now what are we going to do when we take a picture again we're going to ask our photo output to capture a photo we're going to start it with the default setting. Each time we need to start it with a different uh, instance of the settings, which is what we are initializing here. Um, as it says here in the documentation, you cannot reuse capture photo settings. And the delegate is going to be so. Not yet another extension. And we want this date finish processing photo. That's where we're going to get the data, right? Yeah, we'll get the photo. We need to make this an MS object so we can conform to this protocol. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have a concurrency because this is yeah, not the main actor. So we need to add the nine isolated modifier. So we can get the photo data from our photo, the file that our presentation. It's optional, which is why we're doing this. run it again taking a picture let's try taking it here there and you can see here we're getting all of those pictures all that we're missing now is adding a button to commit this to a journal And we need both dependencies. We need to, once the user decides to save the journal, we're going to save it and save the images and then save all of them to a journal. So we need both dependencies. And let's add another published variable. It's loading. So once we tap save to journal, it's going to be loading to true. And we are going to do something similar to what we did in our journal entry. So we have a photo names actor again we're just going to be saving every single name into an actor we're going to away with task group i have our data in our images
Mm, let's see, can we add this? Yes, if you want to start the async. We get all the names. We create a new journal. We add images to the journal. Which is, again, just uh, names. And we save the journal. Good, and now we need to pass this in our journal PSP. Oh, and I missed one more thing. If we are loading Oh, yeah, we need the button to save the journal. And make it a little bigger. And let's run and see what we have. So we have our journey. We have just one journal. We're here. Picture. Our picture. We have three. Do that. Oh, save immediately very fast but notice we have a new journal and if we open it we have new pictures and that was all for today it was very easy to set up the av capture session with the camera and then just to configure an input and an output as you saw we could grab a template from and yeah this is my cat we could grab a template from apple to just display the preview and then easily take a picture with av camera output this was all in preparation to using a new control in the control screen, a new widget that will allow us to access this screen from the home screen. So yeah, be on the lookout for the next video using this feature from a widget. Bye.